This is a video about Minecraft and machine learning. The reason I'm talking about it is because just recently OpenAI and a new group called uh, MindDojo have released papers and code and models to enable you to play Minecraft via a learning agent um, and then maybe enter into competitions. Uh, along with this, there's a CoLab notebook, which I'm uh, going to give a link in the description, so that you can actually load up this environment, see for yourself what's possible, and then maybe you know, next time we'll be able to continue this into more and more experiments and getting a more sophisticated kind of understanding of what's going on. Um, maybe we could even do this competition. So this is the page you'll get to for the OpenAI blog posting on their video pre-training or the VPT model. Now this is a very big model which OpenAI have built specifically to play Minecraft and it's kind of key claim to fame is by training using huge transformer models which is kind of the name of the game in machine learning these days. They've actually trained this to go from zero to mining a diamond and making a pickaxe with those diamonds. Um, so this is kind of the first time this is being done kind of from scratch and um, this is very exciting from it, both a machine learning point of view, a re reinforcement learning point of view, and a kind of Minecraft point of view. Um, if you're interested in this, and that they have a, a whole post about how they've built this model, um, but there's also good explanation. So the, the, the places I would go for an explanation, apart from reading the paper myself, would be to look at Yannick's channel. So this is Yannick Kilcher. Um, he does a whole series of, of interesting uh, talks about new papers. Um, he also played a little Minecraft. Um, I played quite a lot of Minecraft. Um, but if you're interested in some of the details here, uh, there's also an, um, kind of a new person called Eden. Um, also very nice and possibly more in-depth description of, of uh, how the paper works. Um, I would recommend these both if you're interested to find out the, the background of what OpenAI is doing. At almost exactly the same time as OpenAI published their new results, a group called MindDojo has also come up with a big data set and like ambitious plans for how we're gonna learn to play Minecraft from data. Um, so their data set is uh, not only um, thousands upon thousands of hours of video, um, but also uh, contents of blog postings, um, Reddit chats, um, the full Minecraft, essentially the, as they say, internet scale knowledge base of Minecraft. So this is a very interesting kind of multiple sets of data. Um, they also come up with a little bit of code um, but I'm going to come up with a, an alternative set of code because it will interleave with what OpenAI is doing uh, even more. But clearly there's going to be a good uh, crossover between these groups and what, what OpenAI is doing. Going back to OpenAI and some of the other stuff I'll be talking about later, um, there is a repo on GitHub called MineRL or Mineral, depending on how you want to say it. And basically this embeds a small Minecraft server which enables an agent, i.e. the computer, to see the screen, do actions, and then see the next frame. And essentially play the game uh, frame by frame um, at however many frames a second you set it. So this is um, a fairly tricky package to get installed. And in particular, um, OpenVPT requires version 1.0 and in order to make it easier, I built a CoLab notebook so you can use Google's CoLab, which is a free cloud Jupyter notebook equivalent. Um, so you can actually load this up and, and play around with it yourself. And you'll see I've made some choices for this CoLab, um, which will actually make it more efficient when you're doing it in the cloud. Okay, so let's get on to the code. Um, this is Google CoLab. Um, I've got it loaded up. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. Um, basically, this is uh, taken over from one of the previous um, Mine RL intros, um, but I wanted to like specifically make this for Colab, and so there are a few tricks um, that you know would help be very helpful. Now, one thing to note is that this will initially load in a an environment without a GPU. So Colab enables you to have a CPU instance, a GPU instance, or even a TPU instance, all for free, run by Google. So this is extremely helpful um, for machine learning um, experiments. And 
know, it's kind of a go-to thing if you just want to play around quickly because it's all set up, ready to go. Now I've left this one in a CPU instance and I'll, I'll sh explain why. Um, the key thing is that actually installing this software is not easy and it is moreover it's time consuming. So the original setup that you would do, and this I would say you would do for every time you start this notebook, you actually install a specific version of the OpenJDK, um, which is Java, and these other packages, and it takes about a minute to run this cell. And the next cell would take about 22 minutes to run. So this is actually, this is installing mine RL, for instance, um, in particular the proper version of mine RL, and a couple of extra things to enable it to be rendered in Colab. So because this is 22 minutes, I only really want to do this once. And so in this notebook, I've got a few tricks to make it so you do it once and you can then save off that um, pre-installed version onto your Google Drive. And then you can just load that back and expand it, which would be a much quicker process. Okay, so the way in which it does it, this cell here um, just sets up some paths. And then this cell, the from google.colab import drive, will actually uh, ask you to authenticate against your Google Drive. So if you've got a Google account, which is very likely if you're opening Colab anyway, um, you'll have a Google Drive and most likely it will have some space on it. So th this image is gonna be about one and a half gigabytes um, of stuff it's going to put in there, all, all compressed. Okay. So if there is a file on your Google Drive, it's going to pull it down, expand it, and you're good to go. Um, if not, on the other hand, um, so it's going to test to see whether it can actually work. If not, it's then going to go through installing into a specific directory all of the mine RL, the mineral and the, the other things that it needs. So having installed that and also done a fix for Python 3.7, um, basically this is now is now kind of good to go. And so the next thing we can do is just import our libraries um, and you know behave just like we would um, with uh, the mine RL um, package. So I'll have a, a couple of uh, you know, small experiments to do, but later on down down at the bottom here, what you'll see is or well, Let's do it right now. If, if I go down here, um, if I've actually implemented a new um, mine env, then basically this will wrap it up and pop it up to my Google Drive. So the very first time you execute it, this, it won't find it on your Google Drive. It will do the 22 minute install. You can then have a look and make sure it works. And then it will then wrap it up and put it onto your Google Drive. Second time, either running on your CPU or your GPU, um, this will find that it has the file on your Google Drive, unpack it, and you're good to go. So the unpacking takes maybe two minutes, and so you've, you've saved 20 minutes every time. Now this is kind of important if you're running on a GPU, and here I've, got a G I've proven to myself that it will work with a GPU as well, because if Google detects that you're not right using the GPU for an extended period of time, they'll start hassling you about why aren't you using our GPU yet because it is really just a waste. Um, if you do the install every time, um, you're always going to be hassled by these messages and Google's not going to be happy with you using Colab like that. On the other hand, this quick method of installing it would enable you to get a GPU instance up and running so that you can be um, you know, treating Google's free giveaway fairly as well. Okay, so having having gone through these steps um, and installing the libraries, importing them, um, I set up a virtual display. So this is, enables, even though Colab doesn't have an actual display, it enables Minecraft backend to write to something. And having done that, I, let's just see what's going on. So if I do the, here's my environment. So this is one of the environments they have, which is build a village house. Okay, well, I'll talk about that in a little bit later. But for this environment, the kind of things that you can do, which is the action space that your little Minecraft character can do, include like attack, backwards and forwards, move the camera, um, choose a hotbar item. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different things that your Minecraft character can do between every frame. 
Um, and there's also, you can also kind of sample these actions. You can see what kind of arguments these are taking. Um, uh, you, you probably wouldn't want to execute these because the camera would be waggling around. Um, there's a whole bunch of things which aren't kind of realistic, but at least this gives you some sample data. Okay, so having done that, what I can, I just then time a few things. Um, resetting the environment tends to take like a minute and a half. It's, it's a, like a decent length of time that it takes. But having done that, I can then loop around this uh, while not done. Basically, I'm going to do this 12 times because um, I have this iter greater than 12. I'm going to move the camera. So this is building on a, a no operation for the little for Steve. Um, the camera moves by 30 degrees. Um, it then steps through the environment. Um, it then looks at the point of view camera and then it shows what the contents of the point of view camera is. So th there's a few timing things as well, which I was kind of interested to see. Um, but basically the output looks like this in that you get um, the camera and you can see that it's slowly moving around um, with each frame is going round a little bit until we get back to the, the beside the house that we started with. So there is just a, like a very quick um, view into what can we actually see uh, when we execute this. Um, and yes, we do get something. Another thing which uh, the OpenAI environment does is it's all powered by moving the mouse, um, click, making a few clicks. Uh, you don't get to craft an item um, like as a an atomic command, you have to pull up the crafting menu, move the mouse around and drag and drop. Um, so this is kind of demonstrating, does the inventory command do what we expect? And the answer is, yes, it does. In that if I open the inventory, move the camera, move it back, move it back again. So basically I'm doing a little triangle with the camera and then shutting the, the inventory off. You can see that it's actually moving the camera, moving it back. This is all kind of nice and predictable. I just wanted to check for myself that this is well behaved. Okay, so you can see we've been kind of executed our um, environment just a little bit, um, seen what it can do, and you know, we, this this instance I had a GPU because this is the second time I ran it, but I choose chose my backend as being a GPU backend this time, um, essentially letting us start to think about machine learning. Um, possibly in the next video. Okay, so um, let us let us move on and I'll talk about um, what the next steps and kind of the rationale for wanting to do this is. Okay, so one of the reasons that OpenAI's release and that Mind Dojo's release is, is very appropriately timed is that there is a competition called the Basalt Competition 2022. Um, this is going to be a public competition with a leaderboard and all that kind of stuff um, based upon doing a few things. That There's another one called the Diamond Competition, but I think I'm going to focus on Basalt for the moment um, for a reason that you'll see very shortly. The Basalt tasks, there are four of them. And the task, first task is find a cave. So basically you might be in whatever biome, you're going to have to run around, find a cave, go in it and stop. And so this is a fairly a fairly simple task, but it also proves that can you run around basically without falling down a, a ravine or trying to swim in water. And when you actually see these things, um, these agents trying to perform these tasks, they will make horrible errors. They will just continually run into a wall uh, and, until they until time is up. They, they will do things which a normal Minecrafter will never do because they've had to learn about this environment just by seeing these pictures. They come with no uh, preconceptions about where is the sky or what is water or what is a hole in the ground. Um, basically, they learn everything from what they see in front of them. Um, so finding a cave, simple task for a human, um, but you know, there's, there's a lot of things which can go wrong along the way. Um, the make waterfall, I'm sure you can read here too, basically they're gonna put you near a mountain. Um, what they want you to do is kind of run up the mountain a bit put a block of blob of water at the top so you get a nice waterfall. You then have to retreat, turn around and take a photo. Um, so this is kind of a, you know, you have to have kind of good control over climbing and retreating and then knowing which way you're pointing the whole time. Um, so this is another interesting task. Okay. 
village animal pen. So here your the task is to when you're in a village and without destroying the village, put build a pen and get some animals in it, or find some animals or build a pen super quickly around them. Um, so this is this is getting more difficult. If you try to build a pen around animals, you, you'll you'll understand how it's not so easy. They do keep running away, um, and you know maybe there's other things you do like have some wheat, tempt them into your pen once you've built it, all this kind of thing. Um, but even so, getting your agent to understand whether the pen is is a nice big pen and there are no holes in it, um, that's a proper problem. Um, and well, you're. I'm sure we'll see how difficult this task is. And finally, build a village house. Um, you'll get put into a biome, and the idea here is to find a spare plot of land and build a build a house. And ideally, it should be in the same kind of style as the rest of the village. Though I think that's a big ask. Anyway, so here are the the, um, the basalt tasks, and there's a whole schedule for doing this. But you'll notice that there's mention of neurips. So the Basel competition is a new rips competition this year. New rips is like the biggest machine learning um, conference. It's like the highest regarded. Um, there, there are some other, but it's definitely a top tier conferences. There are definitely um, other top tier conferences, but new rips is kind of like a um, holds a special place. So um, if I move on to the next slide, that this is the new rips competition slide, um, and it explains how you know, what they're going to do, how the evaluation is going to work. This is an, an academic conference to which regular people can, can submit, you know, it's, it's, a, it's just like a, um, a Kaggle competition in the sense that anyone can do it. Um, if one was successful, one you could then write up a paper and be like an author at this NeurIPS uh, workshop. Um, that would be, that would be a great thing. Um, so this is, this is kind of a bait to get people to do this, uh, this competition, um, as well as the kind of the learning which will go along with doing this. So um, here's kind of the, the reason for getting interested right now in learning to play Minecraft via computer um, is that there is a competition towards the end of the year, I guess. Um, the competition finals are in October, the results are announced in November and the actual conference is in December. Um, now is a good time to get involved because everyone's just about to start training their things um, starting, I think, J July the 1st. All right, that's it from me. Um, hopefully this has got been enough to tempt you and, and have a look at the collab. Um, if there are any problems or anyone's interested in uh, what direction we might go, um, please leave a comment. Um, I'd be definitely interested in finding other people who are interested in this. Um, and you know, doing more talks, uh, more videos, more code, um, and seeing what happens. Thank you.